Welcome to our weekly Forex market analysis call, and this is in preparation for trading on the week of August, the October the 8th, 2018. My apologies. Um, all right, so before we get started here, just a quick disclaimer. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. All right, so let's see what this week holds for us. Okay, so let's take a quick peek at what happened last week. We had most important thing was FOMC. FOMC um, actually did not come out as, sorry, FOMC. My apologies today, my brain is not working. Non-farm payrolls, that's what we had last week. And non-farm payrolls report was actually not too positive. And as a result of that, we saw US dollar decline, is, decline slightly. Um, however, the big thing was with Brexit. We are seeing a lot of Brexit news come out. And as a result of that, British pound um, has, been, has been very strong. So let's take a look at what's coming up this week here. And so just keep that in mind. We are going to or will continue to hear Brexit related news and anytime there's a positive comment. So last week we heard a lot of positive comments about them reaching an agreement soon, the concerns about Irish border sort of getting resolved or they're working on a plan around that, that type of stuff. So there's a, there was a lot of positive news coming out. And anytime there's a positive comment coming out, it will help the British pound and it will push it higher. So that's something to keep in mind. And this will be regardless of what's going on with the US dollar, British pound will go up on the positive comments. And if we hear negative comments, um, then we'll, it will have a negative impact regardless of what's going on with other currencies. So just that, that's the important part to keep in mind here. So coming up here, we have, um, we have holiday for both long weekend for both Canada and U.S. For Canada, it is Thanksgiving and it's Columbus Day for the U.S. So long weekend. So thank you guys for joining me on this long weekend. Um, and coming up on, so not a whole lot on Monday here. We do have business confidence numbers for Australia. So we have uh, we have seen commodity currencies really uh, basically take a beating this week. Last week, they were very strong. This week, they have been, or this previous week, they were very, uh, they were quite weak. And so we'll see what happens with them. But overall, business confidence number here will have an impact on Australian dollar. And then Tuesday, not too much. We have MPC member uh, speaking here. And just like when Fed members speak, MPC members do have an impact, especially with everything that's going on around Brexit and Bank of England. So Bank of England has started uh, kind of, uh, um, oh my God. Okay, <laughs> Bank of England is too is late night last night. Um, Bank of England, they are uh, tightening the monetary policy. Um, they have done one interest rate hike. So it is important to pay attention to these comments because a lot of times uh, the part market participants are looking for direction in regards to what the, what the central bank is thinking in that regard. On Wednesday, we have GDP and manufacturing production numbers for British pounds. So that will be important there for the pound. Um, and then we have US dollar PPI numbers. Uh, again, this is a precursor to our retail sales, so important numbers there. We do have um, FOMC member and then RBA assistant governor speaking. Treasury currency report here. This will um, this can have an impact as well on the U.S. dollar. So again, it's tentative, so we don't really know when it's coming out, but do keep an eye on that. Thursday we have. This here is important, the CPI and core CPI number. Um, the reason this is important because is this is the inflation. And inflation is a concern um, for central banks. They do want the inflation to go or inflation to be going up, but not go up too rapidly. So if the number is positive here, and we have had some concerns around inflation in the U.S. because the number wasn't increasing, whereas we have seen in U.K., the inflation number has been going up, but not the same um, 
in uh, in the U.S., even though Fed has been raising rates and the economy is doing really well, job market's doing well, in spite of that, the inflation number has not been going up. So that was a concern or has been a concern. Um, so if the numbers come out less than expected here, it will have a negative impact on the U.S. dollar. And another thing here, ECB monetary policy meeting accounts, this is also very important because um, eyes are on ECB to see whether they're going to start tightening their monetary policy. They have, they, policy they have done some of it, but not they have not raised rates. So at this point, they have basically said that they're not going to raise rates till next year, 2019. But any change in that or any comment uh, that, will kind of point towards that will be positive for the euro. So this is like FOMC meeting minutes where it's not a full on press conference, but this is just the meeting minutes. So, uh, but they do have an impact on the markets. And then going into Friday here, we don't have a ton of important data, consumer confidence number here, FOMC members, anytime FOMC members speak, they will have an impact, but Friday late uh, afternoon, it doesn't, it won't really do too much. So there, there is this IMF meetings. Now, when anytime there are world leaders getting together, uh, there they tend to be comments that come out, and these comments can have an impact. So just make a note of that. All right, so let's go on to our charts now. We will start off with Euro US dollar here. So euro dollar, as we can see, if we were to remove this here, we have been a little range bound here for a period of time since basically here April up until now. This has just traded in this range. Last week, we were looking for euro to drop. And as we can see, it did drop. It came into our next support and resistance level here, maybe slightly lower than that. So we are right into the, the support level kind of going over here. So right now, the bias is to the downside. We have a good, decent close here. In this case, I will look for price to drop. The bias would be to the downside. But with the non-farm payrolls, num payroll numbers not coming out that positive, we could have, a, we could get pullbacks in this regard. So keep that in mind. We could get a pullback and then a drop. So first target would be, the low of this week, which is 14.63. And then we're looking for price to break the low. Uh, we need to see a close below the low here and then a pullback and another drop. So my bias is to the downside. Uh, first target 1.1460 level and then, or 63 level, then looking at price to drop further. So bearish bias for euro dollar pound dollar here as you can see pound is one of um, one of the us or crosses a uh, pound dollar that has not done what other us crosses have done so with this one we have a bullish pin bar instead so this one is looking bullish with this i'm looking for price to go up further now there are there is some support resistance level in the middle here but I will just look for price to either go into the top of this pin bar here or to the next one. So bullish bias target would be 1.3290 or about 3300, which is the top of that pin right there. Now it could go into the top of this pin and turn around, but bias is bullish. Do keep in mind any of the comments that come from Brexit negotiations and around that topic because that could turn things around completely and price could drop if negative comments do come out. But right now, as it stands, this is looking bullish. 1.3300 will be the target for a pound. Aussie dollar. So we talked about commodity currencies kind of taking a hit this week. So as we can see, a huge drop. We did have this bearish pin bar last week and we were looking for a drop and we got a huge drop. Now looking for a pullback and another drop. So our bias is quite bearish here. So that's a big bearish engulfing candle close. So in terms of a pullback, I would look for a pullback either into the 70, 87 level or the 71.50 level and then a drop further. So bias is bearish here 
and basically I'm looking for a move like this or looking for a bit more of a pullback and then a drop. So biases to the downside target would be 69.35 level back into these pins over here. So bearish bias for Aussie dollar. New Zealand dollar here, same thing. We had this bearish candle close. We were looking for a drop. We got that. And now bias is bearish and looking for price to drop further into the next target level of 63.50 here. Again, with this one as well, uh, with a lot of with non-farm payroll not being so positive, we could get pullbacks. So just keep that in mind. So I'm looking for a move like that. Biases to the downside target is 63.50. Dollar CAD. Dollar CAD was bullish here. We had a pin bar, so we did see a drop and then things turned around. So with this one, next target will be higher up. 1.3080 will be the next target. Now, we do need to keep in mind that we have this support resistance in the middle here and price has reacted several times around this level. If you take a look here, several times price has reacted, which means it could get into trouble there as well. So that's, that will be something to keep in mind. But right now we have a bullish candle close. Target would be 1.3080. Euro pound here, big uh, bearish candle close here. So this is looking bearish. I will look for price to drop further. 86.80 will be the target to the downside. And just to keep in mind, when we get large moves, there tends to be some sort of a pullback. So always keep that in mind. Any large moves usually will show us some pullbacks and then a continuation um, in the where they're going so in the direction that they were originally moving so in this one we're looking for price to drop but again we could have a pullback especially if there's some brexit comments coming out then it could turn around completely but for now that's the kind of move i'm looking for target is 86 80 level to the downside bearish bias euro swiss franc here this one is looking bullish we have a bullish pin bar here now we are into resistance. So keep that in mind. As we saw with this candle, price pulled up and then it turned around. So same thing, we are into this important support resistance level, but it is looking bullish at the moment. So first thing to do would be to make sure price does go on the other side of it. And once it does, we're looking for pullback like that and looking for price to move up further. So in this case, bias is bullish. But if for some reason price is not able to break because we are into this resistance level, then it may just go retest the high and then drop back into this range. Because if we were to remove our support resistance line from right here, you'll see it has been trading in this range for a number of weeks and it could just get stuck here. So do keep that in mind, but overall biases to the upside and target would be 1.1550 level. Pound Swiss franc. Pound Swiss franc is looking bullish. We have seen price basically here we go. So it was trading in a range for a long time and then it broke through and now we saw a big bullish close here. Next target here will be bullish as well. But again, keep in mind that it is into resistance at the moment. As you can see, price is right into this level. But um, there is the, the way the candle is closing here. This, is, this looks like a bullish Mariboza. There's really no selling pressure. There's no wick whatsoever here. So as a result of that, we're looking for price to move up further. But again, any comments around Brexit could have an impact here. So right now, this is looking bullish. 1.3280 will be the target here, which will be the top of uh, that um, these, these candles up top there. Dollar Swiss franc here. This one we saw a big bullish move on Friday. We had a pin bar there just because of non-farm payroll report that did not come out positive. So now weekly candle close is still bullish. So I would look for price to go up further. Target would be 1.0070 level. One thing to keep in mind here is that we have some strong support and resistance at this level. 
And as a result of that, we could see a turnaround there. And just from basically where price is right now, this it went into this high, if we just were to pull it back. So this is support resistance right here as well. And um, we just need to pay attention that it could turn around. And as we saw right about here, see how we had a very strong candle close, but then just price just turned around. This could, we could have a similar move here where price goes into this 99.80 level and then turns around there. So that is the caution. Now, if price does not do that, so this, this can happen. Now, if price breaks through, then we're looking for a pullback and then another continuation move to the upside. So right now, bias is bullish. First target would be 99.80 and then 1.0070. Okay, so let's do yen crosses here. Yen looking, very, pound yen looking very bullish here. Let's get rid of some of these. So we are into that resistance level right here. It hasn't quite broken the high, but it, it is looking bullish here. So target is, our bias is to the upside. Next target would be 150.88, and it could go higher from there all the way into the top here, depending on how things play out. But right now it is bullish bias all, all these weeks the candle has been bullish. So first target 150.88, second target 153.70. So it could keep on going, keep that, um, so that's the biases to the upside. Euro yen here, Euro yen um, has been bearish, not as, Euro has not been as strong as pound. So let's take a look at what are we looking at here. In terms of bias, it's to the downside and looking for price to drop into 130.20 level or even 130.00. And then looking for it to, if it breaks the support level right here, looking for it to continue lower. And next target beyond that would be 128.50 level. So bias is to the downside for Euro Yen. Dollar Yen here. We have a pin bar here in dollar yen. It went close to the, the top here and we have a doji here, which shows a rejection of the high. And that means looking for price to drop. Our target here will be, so the, I will be careful about it turning around right about there, 113.20 level. But I think this one could drop further. Next target would be, 112.20. So bias is to the downside and looking for price to drop here. Aussie yen. Aussie yen has been bearish. We have a big bearish candle close here. So looking for price to drop further. Next target would be 78.60 level to the downside. So bias is bearish for Aussie yen. New Zealand yen, similar thing here. We have a big bearish candle close here and looking for price to drop further. The target here will be the bottom of this little range that it's been trading in for some time for a few weeks here. 72.20 will be the target to the downside. So bearish bias for New Zealand yen. CAD yen, this one is bearish as well here. And we're looking for price to move lower. We have a nice bearish pin bar close here. Next target, um, this one could drop further here. So we are looking at 87.14. I think it could go lower all the way into 86.20 level. So bias is bearish for CAD yen. And let's take a look at gold. Gold is still trading in this range here. Now we are seeing it go towards the top of the range, but it is still range bound. And looking at the weekly here, as we can see, it's right in the middle of the range. So bias is neutral. I would still look to trade the range here. Price goes into the high here. 
we're looking for price to come back towards the middle of the range. At some point, the range is going to break. So um, keep that in mind. But for now, this is looking bullish, heading towards the top of the range. And one point, sorry, 1214 will be the target here to the top here. So bullish candle close, but it is range bound. So we have, uh, um, we have slight room to the upside, but it could turn around from there. All right, so let's take a look at oil here. Oil is dropping here. We have a pin in the oil and next target here would be 71, 171.00. So bias is bearish for oil. Copper here, copper has pulled back. We had a big daily, sorry, weekly candle close here for the last couple of weeks. It's been pulling back. So now this is looking bearish here, but we are into support. So it could turn around, but my target will be to the downside, looking for it to drop here. 2.65 will be the target to the downside for copper. And let's take a look at Bitcoin, see what Bitcoin is doing. Bitcoin has also been range bound, hasn't really done much from the weekly perspective. If we go to daily here, we can see that it's just been going back and forth in this range. So right now, my bias is just neutral on this. I would just expect it to keep doing this, um, just kind of stay in this range. So neutral bias for Bitcoin. And silver, let's take a look at silver. Silver is neutral here as well. Overall, the bias is to the downside, but right now looking quite neutral. We have pins on both sides. So it's a spinning top trade setup which is an indecision candle and doesn't really, it can go either way. So I will, if it goes into the bottom here, it can just reject and come back into the range. If it goes into the high, it can reject and come back into the range. So this is completely neutral. So we just have to wait and see uh, for that. Uh, there was a question about dollar cat and NAFTA comments. So they did sign this new deal. Now we'll see they're still kind of, working on the actual wording and stuff like that behind the scenes. So it's hard to really, for me to comment at this point on how it's going to go. There is, um, there are some concerns around um, this whole good faith. It's, uh, I, I think because of President Trump's comments about how he was approaching this deal, I think there is uncertain, uncertainty um, in the sense that whether us will keep the agreement or not so that's the concern and because of that so normally if it was anybody else and they had signed this agreement you would actually hold them to the agreement but with the with the current president's office that has not been the case and president trump had actually actually made comments saying that he, they will do whatever to get the U.S. goals. And because of that, the NAFTA negotiations fell through because one of the newspapers released the story and um, there was a big fallout as a result of that. But agreement has been signed under a new name and there are provisions in that whether, you know, we'll have to see how it goes. So I don't have a ton of direction in terms of how it's going to go. For now, we just know that it's been it's been signed. So because it was signed, we saw a big drop. It was last week, um, right at the beginning, but now US dollar is higher. So I don't really have currently, I don't have a feel for how things will progress. So now as the things are implemented, the uh, terms of those agreement agreements between Canada, Mexico, US are implemented, we'll see whether they get implemented or not and then i think there can be some fallout from that but we'll have to wait and see all right any other questions yes dollar index let's take a quick peek at dollar index here
All right, so dollar index, we are, let's take a look at the weekly here. So with the dollar index, we are back. So this is looking bullish and we are into this support resistance level, right into this pin here. So at this point, we'll have to see where it goes. Our weekly close is bullish, but there's a large pin on top, which means things could turn around. And what I would say here will be that we have to, I would think that price would go up higher. It could go up into 96.39 before it turns around, but I would be cautious with this one because it is, it does have this large pin on top which gives it bullish to neutral view so as a result of that i think it could turn around here so i'd be mindful of that but right now it is looking bullish i think we can go see the test of that high again so 96 uh about 9600 level but i think it could go higher into this 9657 level as well so bullish to neutral would be my bias on that let's take a peek at our euro index. Okay, so for euro, we have basically just the opposite of that. We are into support, price did go below that. So right now it's bearish, but exactly the opposite of where what the dollar index was doing. We have a pin in the bottom, which suggests that there is some uncertainty. So I would basically look for a retest of the low. And if the price is not able to break the low, then chances are it will go back into the range. And Euro index looks completely like what Euro dollar does at the moment. So it has been trading in this range. This was a break and then a turnaround. But right now it's been in a range. So if we see price dropping here on the Euro, on the Euro index here, your dollar will drop. And if it turns around at the bottom, we are likely to see, or we will see your dollar turn around here as well. But it could go lower here. There is room to go lower. So this is where we are currently. It could go all the way into 113.9 and then 113.4. So those are the options there. Um, another question. Um, Dollar index will run out of steam after elections. So I think there, I think just the whole elections during the elections, it, it will be interesting because when we had the presidential elections, it was crazy. Uh, we saw it go one way and after the elections, it went completely the opposite direction and it, then it turned around. So I think the whole elections will, uh, it will wreak havoc on the market, so and on the U.S. dollar. So it will it will have to be uh, will have to be concerned. But um, Amy, let's do this in our trade room. We'll take a look at the longer term view, and we'll have a bit more of a discussion around that um, in our trade room. So let's do that on Monday. Um, and then another question here: What do you think of Bank of Canada raising rates regularly? Um, what if impacts will have on the economy? Well, if Bank of Canada raises rates right now, they are a little bit concerned with the NAFTA negotiations that were going on. And uh, just overall, they were a little bit concerned and holding back in raising rates. They did come out and say that we are not going to automatically raise rates every time that there is a meeting. So they have been kind of holding true to to, to that at this point. So it's, it's interesting. I think just overall, Bank of Canada has to be paying attention to the overall, um, what's going on in, in the larger market. So we have trade wars, there are concerns uh, right now. And with US being, or Canada being so closely tied to the US, there are concerns there as well. So I don't see that Bank of Canada is or will be in any rush to raise rates. Of course, that's just my opinion. Um, so I'm not expecting an interest rate hike soon, but I think they are tightening the monetary policy. And the reason for that is because the, the housing market was kind of getting out of control uh, in both Vancouver and Toronto in Canada. So they have been sort of clamping 
down on interest rates. And that is ha- creating, at least on the housing market, it is dampening it down a little bit. It hasn't, the market hasn't dropped drastically, but it has uh, slowed down a bit uh, as a result of the interest rate hike. And I think on the broader economy, I don't see I don't I don't see too much of an impact at this moment. Um, they haven't the interest rates haven't been tightened so much that they are impacting the rest of the economy in terms of getting loans for businesses and things like that. So I think in the short term there isn't a big impact from interest rate hikes at this point. But I think overall the economy is doing good. Oil has been going up, so that is positive because Alberta was one of the states that wasn't doing so, or provinces that wasn't doing so well. But with with the oil going up, things are starting to look better. Uh, So overall, I think Canadian economy is doing well, not as well as the U.S. economy, but it it is on the right track. So at some point, uh, Bank of Canada will raise rates. I think uh, we could either see an interest rate hike later this year or early next year. I think there is one coming, but it won't be like this month or next month, in my opinion. Okay, hope that helps. Any other questions before we wrap it up? So just a quick comment about interest rate hikes. Anytime a central bank does an interest rate hike, it is good for the for the currency. So that currency tends to go up. All right, so we'll wrap it up here. You guys have a wonderful rest of the weekend for my peeps in the US and Canada. Enjoy your long weekend. Happy Thanksgiving to all the folks in the in Canada here. Enjoy your weekend and I will see you next time. Bye for now.